There you go. And you're up. Thanks. Uh, I will give a quick overview of the, the new box Unified Documentation website. It's a project we did over the past uh, the last year with a working group. Uh, before that, uh, I'm Pedro, Pedro Brachado from Brazil. And I joined Pope uh, one year and three days ago, which was in a PopCon session. It was a very good time joining Pope. I, I'm working mostly on the RPM plugin, and I'm also a maintainer of the Dynaconf library. Um, I want to talk about a bit how this, this project started, this idea. And it was on this PopCon. Um, on this, uh, I, I think on the lightning talks, people were discussing about the documentation, uh, about these problems of, of having all separate uh, websites, and it was a bit confusing, and people wanted to to fix that and make one unified documentation. And I was really interested in this this discussion, so I joined the working group that that was formed after PopCon. And the, the, the core people on this working group were Brian, Deco, Dennis, and Grant. Uh, so we started with some planning and doing some core decisions. We were meeting like weekly, and they were very uh, productive discussions. Mm -hmm. Then we quickly developed a proof of concept of how this would actually work. And uh, very early, uh, people had the idea of creating the, the staging pipeline to, to make sure everything would work. And then the migration with was the part where we had a great deal of collaboration of the whole pop team. Was a very very interesting experience. People were really engaged on, on, on making this happen, and it, it worked well. But, and then some final touches, which was like uh, putting some CI and redirects of the legacy stuff and changing domains, this kind of stuff. That's the, the overview of, of the the whole process and just want to take the time to, to thank everyone involved um, especially the working group uh, for me it was a very good experience to to get into food and uh, get to collaborate on, on a project like this and of course everyone that uh, helped this happen but Today, I want to focus on these three items, which the core decisions the working group made, um, like the, the core strategies to, to address the problem, and the conceptual model I, I proposed to, to help organize this, and the presentation later, which is really how, how it looks, how it was really uh, structured. In our website. So, from the start, we wanted to make it really simple for us, for the team, and for the users. Uh, and that's because it was a really big change, like taking a lot of repositories, uh, changing the the, the language that was used in the documentation and aggregating it all together. It was really complex stuff. Um, and if it, if it was not simple, it would probably have failed. So we kept that in mind. The goal was very straightforward. It was just to make one website with all the plugins documentation. So we tried to be disciplined about not making uh, other stuff like trying to improve the documentation of every page we were seeing. And I think we were able to do that 
to some degree. Um, and the technology we chose to just mark down, it was kind of general agreement. And we chose MKDOX because it was it, it is a very popular uh, library for documentation, the Python ecosystem. The versioning decision was a bit hard one because all of the legacy plugins, almost all of them had uh, this versioning scheme, this version namespace where you could choose the release. But uh, reconcile this with our main goal would be really complex. And we choose to uh, make this trade off and say that the versioning should be on the file, like with nodes of the versioning. Some websites do that uh, in order to to be able to, to finish the project in the timely manner. Uh, then we decided that each repository would host its, its files, its documentation files, because it was more practical. And if it was a monorepo, probably people wouldn't, would forget to put stuff there. Uh, and about the migration, uh, one decision was to have this period where, where we would have the new doc documentation files and the legacy ones living together for some time. And then we would phase out the legacy ones. And I think that, that worked well. So about the conceptual model, um, the, the aggregation itself was not very hard, but just aggregating stuff wouldn't make it very coherent uh, out of the box. So I was thinking about a strategy of making the documentation more coherent across all the, the whole ecosystem. So I thought some tool of, for creating a conceptual integrity uh, around some concepts to help uh, or orient this phase of stretching one documentation website. And for the future, for the future, having such such well-established concepts can, can help to improve the, the quality of the content, which was not the goal of this first project. Uh, this is the, the kind of conceptual framework that I've chosen to use the indexes. And it's a systematic approach to technical documentation authoring. If you look at various documentation websites out there, you'll be able to recognize uh, concepts that are presented in, in this approach. It's really a website that talks about uh, this, this this idea of how to, to approach documentation. And the, the basic idea is thinking about the user needs and understanding what what are the, those needs. Um, first, the first thing is that the user wants to learn, uh, learn about the project like uh, the basic skills to, to, to use the project and the basic concepts uh, in a project-based approach, like having some kind of end goal and on this journey, uh, present the basic tooling, the basic concepts, the basic workflows. So through a project that the user learns, acquires the basic skills, for, for to be able to work the project. That's the, they call this a tutorial. Then uh, after the user has, has the basic skills, it wants to apply those skills to whatever he has on, uh, for the purpose he's using the project. So he wants to get stuff done on real life. So there's also this idea of an end goal, but 
the journey in this case should be really straightforward. There is nothing substantially new that the user will learn. He really needs to get it, this thing done. And this is what they call uh, guides or how to guides. Then information orientated phases after the user already has some basic skills and know how to do uh, stuff that he needs. Maybe he needs some specific information uh, or some, some piece, some component or some aspect. That's usually some settings or uh, some API options or some something like that. It's really something that you will consult, you will look on specific types. And the, the explanation oriented phase, um, it's, it's not to make the user do something really. It's about helping the user to, to see new perspective of something. So on explanations, uh, we might talk about uh, some components, some aspects of the project, why we did something in a certain way, or talk about possible ways of doing stuff without getting too much detail. So after all the work is a way of uh, reflecting. It's a, a way about reflecting about the work, the project, and the possibilities. And of course, there are different types of users, which here we put as personas. On the Pope, we have established uh, the difference between user, admin, and developers, uh, where users more people that uh, need to manage content, use the API, while admins uh, usually have privileged access to the instance, so they will configure deployment, uh, do integrations, and all this kind of stuff. And uh, developers and plugin writers, which has a whole different set of needs. Um, so, yeah, uh, here I just want to stress that <coughs> This is really a conceptual model, not a method. So, uh, in this case, it helped us to, to to shape how we want to organize the project. And the idea is that that can help us to to make uh, our documentation reflects reflect uh, our project. So, let's have a quick look on how this stuff fits together. Um, well, one of the things we want, wanted to make different from the previous, previous state of the documentation was to make things simpler, as I already mentioned, and less overwhelming in terms of less less options and more meaningful options for the user. So here the menu has only five items and here we have uh, just the core entry points of the project. And this starter tutorial is not really a tutorial today. And I will take the opportunity to call that maybe we could do some session to design how this tutorial could look like. And yeah, I can do that later. Then here in the user manual, we have both, both personas, uh, the user and the admin with those category, categories uh, I discussed. And there is another structure layer because Pulp ecosystem has a bunch of, of repositories, so I decided to divide like on content types or stuff related to deployment or how we interact with Pulp and other stuff. Uh, the developers kind of the same thing. 
I removed the blog from the previous website and it's worth noticing it might need some cleanup like this. And there are a lot of this, this kind of change log stuff. Maybe we don't need that here. And this help page is really uh, for other stuff that's not plugin specific. And that's that's the basic structure of how it looks. Here are uh, some ideas of future work for the, for the project. Uh, like there's some some caveats with the search because like uh, we really posted an issue, for example, that when you search for change log, it will appear a big list of change log without saying from which repository that is. So that's kind of suboptimal. But MK Docs material is developing a new search engine, which hopefully will make this better. So we we'll need to dig to this. And I'm not read every item here, but uh, there are quite few few ideas. I usually put them on the pop docs. Uh, repository of pop docs. I didn't talk about it too much, but it's the tool that aggregates the, the website. And that's that's it for the presentation. Um, I am open for questions, comments, or thoughts. And folks, if you've got questions, you can either raise your hand or just chime in. <clears throat> what do you think is the most important improvement that needs to be done next? Mm. Or what's, on, yeah, what's at the top of your mind? I don't have one uh, very obvious item on the top of my mind. That's good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, that's good. I, I feel like, um, yeah, I, I personally have really enjoyed using the new site. I use it almost on a daily basis to look up documentation. And while the search can be a little bit suboptimal with the change logs, I've definitely experienced where I search for something and then I get a bunch of search log, uh, change log results. In. But that's more of an exception than a rule. Most of the time when I go to search for something, I find specifically what I was looking for. And yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah. Grant? Yeah. So in terms of personal, what, what I would like to see first, is I find myself like like Dennis, like you, I use the site all the time and I have a list of things of, oh, it could be a little better this way or that way. But those are all from the point of view of somebody who uses this site a lot and uses Pulp a lot. What I'd like to see is an absolutely killer, okay, so you want to get Pulp up and running and do something useful. Here's the exact set of instructions you need um, to get people up and running. That would be my first thing. For yeah, the, the tutorial. Exactly. Start like a, yeah, that's something I really wanted to make to get done. Yeah, it will yeah. be really helpful. So Kieran has a question in chat here. How does he get time to work on the docs? Well, I, time is something we all have problems with. Um, uh, Harry Potter had a time turner. If you can find one of those, that works. Deca. Yeah, I don't have a good answer for this. <laughs> it's a common issue for all of us. Uh, Pedro, do you have an idea uh, of how users are interacting with the documents, like some sort of like uh, usage statistics of the new document? I think, like, I think we have this, Dennis, 
but I never seen it. Uh, we, I, I remember Dennis put uh, a link of some analytics stuff. Is that right? I'm sorry. Uh, can you repeat that? I put what? Some analog Google Analytics stuff or something oh, like that. Yeah, there are yes. Um, we use Google Analytics. Um, I haven't looked at them in a long time, actually, but we are keeping track of that. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, it's like I, I believe, like I don't know, like maybe next steps or you know, like any sort of improvement, you know, like uh, yeah, can use those statistics, those statistics, you know, like just to understand, like to where to go or yeah, that would be useful to to know, like. The, the most viewed pages should probably get more attention. That makes sense. And also the pages that have the most, uh, the least amount of time viewed. I feel like so, <laughs> that also will tell you that maybe it's not as helpful as we thought it is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But anyway, that is a good next step, though, is sure. taking a look at those analytics. Now that we've had the site live for like six months or so. I think right it's been in production now for about I feel like the data should be there to give us some insight into it. Yeah, that's a great point. And man, like again, like thank you so much for that real work, you know, like that refactoring of the docs because like it changed a lot, you know, like for way better, way better. Thank you again. Cool. I think the two biggest things that I've seen from this is one, the fact hey, my that I'm going to place and search. Oh, Brian, go ahead. Hey, what's up, everybody? Um, uh, I was just wanted to jump in there uh, and say that our previous site had like 300 to 400 users per day. How uh, many? It had like 300 to 400 users per day. Um, which was like nine. Previous? Yeah, our previous site, which has like nine and a half thousand users. I think that's right. I was just pulling out these analytics. Do we have them for the current one, Brian? Yeah, I don't have so I don't have access to the current one. Yeah, uh, so, okay. Yeah, we'll have to look at it and get back to it. It's it's a really interesting question. I was just kind of poking around and obsessed. I'll try to look it up real quick. Yeah, even if we can't get it in this session, and it's just bringing it to one of the yeah, sessions. Maybe, or yeah, maybe we can try to put it together and bring it back. Yeah. Hey, I have an idea. We have space for lightning talks at the end. How about a five minute, you know, what we've discovered about talk analytics from one or both of y'all? Would that work? Yeah, that I mean, sounds good. amazing idea, man. Okay. So throw yourselves in the lightning talk list. I love that idea a lot. Other questions? And we're coming up on time here. I want to make sure everybody has a chance to have a bio break, check email before we go to the next presentation and give Deco a chance to get moving here. So Pedro, thank you very much. And in case folk weren't didn't really see this, Pedro joined the team at last PulpCon and took a comment from last PulpCon and said, well, crap, I can do that. And then basically made this happen. So we're we're all incredibly impressed and lucky to have him here. Thanks again, Pedro. This has been great. Thank you, Pedro. Right. Great. Yeah, great job. Bunch, Pedro. I'm going to stop recording.